Yo. What's going on, bro? What's up, Christian? How you doing? Great. How about yourself? I'm good. No offense, but you know when uh, people get booked into jail and they take that mug shot against the plain <laughs> wall? Is this how I look? That's how you look. How you look. Let, me, let me go downstairs. I just finished the workout like in my room. So. Take your time. I got you. I'm not Zoom shaming. I mean, I'm wearing a white shirt and everything, so that's just <laughs> tied to the wall. Rodon gets around his man. Still Rodon rolls in the back of the net. Christian Rodon. It takes the Sounders to a 4-3 lead. Go into the gaming room here. Oh, my God. You have a whole game set up? What are you all playing? Right, all right. <laughs> I'm playing a lot of Fortnite. I'm playing a lot of video games. Are you really? Watch the Travis Scott concert. Oh, yeah. It was sick. It was so good. My son was so excited. He was like begging me for the Travis Scott skin and showing me all the different ones. And I was like, those are kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, Fortnite's really good about like live events. Like, Are you Fortniting a lot now because there's nothing to do with all this downtime or you've always been on Fortnite? I've always been on Fortnite, but I just got into streaming video games. So like mm -hmm. that's new to me and it's it's cool to stay engaged with, with fans. Um, it's like a, a weird time, right? And and so it gives people that want to connect with me on a personal level a little bit more access. So uh, I think it's cool. It's fun uh, experience for me. I'm trying to stay fit, you know, on the side, not being able to like go to their practice facility. So doing, you know, a virtual gym workout like like uh, like I just did. So is that where everybody is FaceTiming everybody or it's just you and the trainer? Like how does that work? In terms of this virtual zoom workout it's basically our strength and conditioning coach uh leading the workout you know explaining uh the exercise that we're doing uh he has it all figured out has it all planned out uh and then we're just kind of watching him do it and then uh we take over and then we start we start doing it but no one really talks it's just him you know leading it and then we're just exercising I see your hair hair on fleek though <laughs> you yourself are you yeah, I cut my I cut my hair. I learned to cut my hair in high school, and then like I got better and better, and so I got to like doing fades. So like I'm feeling good, you know. I don't I don't have to like, go go, you know. I don't need a barber right now, which which is great. I was already grown out. I had to FaceTime my stylist, and I had a beard trimmer and scissors, and she's walking me through. I was trying to fade, but I have a bald spot right here. There's no better time to learn because no one's gonna see you. You know, I mean, obviously. Maybe you, yeah. Um, but I guess it's mostly your voice on the radio, right? So you're yeah. fine. On a scale of every day to never, how often have you tuned in to uh, the Wake Up Show on Cube 93.3? Like, how often have you heard of us? And you can say never; it's fine. It's totally fine. no. I, I listen. I listen to you guys in the morning every day that I drive to to training. So it's been tough because I don't drive to training anymore. But every day I, dive, I drive to training, I go back and forth from you guys. Is it weird for you to be on a Zoom with such a massive celebrity right now? Like, <laughs> uh, I, mean, I don't want to intimidate you because, you know. I mean, I feel like we're good friends. You know, we know each other. We you do. Know, we, we, we did that event together. So that was cool. Oh you just made his day saying that we're good friends. We know each other. <laughs> we're great friends. The first time I met you, yeah, it was, it was backstage at the rollout for this jersey. And, and I've told this story on the radio before. I don't know if I told it to you. So they go, hey, walk out to the crowd and do your thing. I'm like, well, I don't have a thing. They go, well, do your thing. And so I go, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold the Sounder scarf up and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have the crowd love you. <laughs> so I walk out and I'm showing off the new jersey and then I go scarves up and then people are like pointing and yelling. I'm like, yes, I'm rocking it. So I'm lifting the scarf higher and they're pointing and I walk off the little catwalk and our digital director goes, the scarf was upside down. I go, what? He goes, yeah, the scarf was upside down. Everyone was telling you to flip the scarf upside down. And so now, every time I go to a game, I'll post a photo, and my comments are all, hey, it's right side up. You've got it right, right. sir. It's right side up. <laughs> Can you explain to Lizette about jersey swapping? We were talking about it on the radio a couple days ago, because dudes are doing that now after, like, partying in Vegas. They'll leave the club – and they'll jersey swap with people. Yeah, I, it's like a sign of respect, you know? Like, uh, you want someone's jersey, you go up to them and, and ask, you know, whether to, to, to have their jersey because you really like them as a player, you, you know them as a friend, um, or, or you end up, you know, kind of just doing this. And you, that's like an a international sign. Like, it happens a lot in the World Cup because 
everybody wants everybody's jersey, right? And, and the best players get asked more often than, than, than you know, the, the smaller players, but it's a sign of respect that has been like passed down from generation to generation in, in the soccer world. And it's really cool to see like football players doing it, NBA players doing it now, but it, it really started, I think, with soccer. Is turning it down like the ultimate slap in the face? <laughs> no, but it's, ha it's happened uh, quite a bit. You know, I've done it personally. Ooh, uh, which, which, fired! It kind of sucks, um, but I've done it based because like someone else asked me for a jersey. So I'm oh, like, okay. dude, I, I would love to, but I can't. I, I already uh, offered my jersey to this guy, you know? So it's not as bad as I made it seem. Um, <laughs> but, but bigger players like that get asked all the time. So like they have to say no all the time. Yeah. Do you wear the sports bra? Unfortunately, we have to wear the sports bra. Everyone uh, does? Yeah, because that tracks how much we run, how fast we run, how much high speed running we do, how much cutting we do. Um, and they track all that. And so they can hold us accountable when someone doesn't run during a game. They can't put it in something more manly, like a headband or something? <laughs> I would. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable. I, I dislike it. Um, and, and it, you can, like, see it through the jersey. So yeah. it looks like we have a hunchback because this GPS is in the back, yeah. obviously. But yeah. um, but I wish they can just, like, implement it into a shin guard or a jersey or something like that. Since, you know, I am a massive celebrity and you're a huge fan, uh, can you be honest with us about, like, flopping and why, like, <laughs> why is that so prevalent? And is it something where, let's say, a player flops? Is, is there a code word or something he says? to the rest of the players to let them know, hey, I'm okay, don't worry. Is it like wrestling? No, there's no code words, but if a trainer comes on, onto the field, mm -hmm. the player has to leave the field. So yeah. your team, your team's gonna play with 10 players. That'll make players stop flopping for a long time, right? That has stopped, I think, flopping a little bit more or exaggerating the yeah. injury a little bit more. But yeah, players do it all the time and it, it's part of the game, unfortunately. If you're on a team and one of your players does a horrendous flop and it's obvious, do you or the rest of the guys who see it kind of roll your eyes and give them some ish in the locker room? Like, bro, come on. That was a horrible flop. 100%. They, they show it in film sometimes. It Did is they really? Hilarious. Yes, it is hilarious. And we joke about it. I mean, it's, it's part of, of our sport, um, whether we like it or not. And, yeah. and we just, we clown on, on, on people when, when it happens, um, especially on our team. Uh, and then they show it in film. It's just hilarious. Give me your take on uh, best Salvadorian food out here or best uh, Guatemalan food out here. Because I got a couple Salvadorian spots I want to put you up on if you don't know. Yeah, uh, there's a there's a place called Salva Mex in Birian, which okay. is very, very good. Um, I had a wet burrito from there yesterday, actually. It hey. was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a place in U District, like the Ave, mm -hmm. uh, called... Uh, Wanakos Tacos. If you've okay. never heard of it, you should definitely go there as well. Okay. What's your go-to meal? Pupusas, 100%. The Salvadorian dish. Oh my gosh. <laughs> never tried it. You need to, you need to do, do yourself. Our boss is obsessed with them. He's Salvadorian too. Yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing. There's a spot in White Center. It's called Salvadorian Bakery. I've been there too. It's yeah. really good. It's really yeah. good as well. I got a sweet too. So any, any pan dulce or bakery, like I'm, I'm <laughs> them out. I'm finding them. Hell yeah. I like that. Is that where my cake was from? That's where your cake was from. I got Lizette a, um, it was a tres leches cake, uh -huh. right? Okay. Yeah. Really good. Were you a silver teeth kid? <laughs> Were you running around the house with silver teeth or no? No. Okay. okay. But, but I have a lot of family members that were. And I they're, like, I, I keep telling my brother, like, man, I, I cannot believe, like, us Salvadorians, us Guatemalans, like, we just put a silver tooth in, like, <laughs> in our mouth like what like no. i think my mom had one i'm like mom what were you thinking what's going on in your head <laughs> why I is guess. it why is it that the silver teeth kids are always the badass kids like why are they so off they're the troublemakers floor? man they i don't are. know i took my son to the dentist like right before the shutdown and i was like oh my god i missed his last cleaning all he does is eat snacks and juice and junk bells like he's gonna have so many cavities i don't want him to have silver teeth like i was stressed out we traveled to portland last season for the uh the second game where you guys beat portland mm -hmm. that was my first time sitting with the emerald city supporters my first time with ecs i don't know if you can hear what they say when you're on the field but those chants and those songs 
are disturbingly violent. Like they are <laughs> aggressive, bro. Yeah, I've I've heard I've heard the songs uh, quite a bit. You don't listen, you don't pay attention to them on the field, but I've heard them like in, during warm ups, after games, you know, all that stuff. And they are violent, especially in that hostile environment, right? When at that that game in Portland, th those games are just absolute nuts. And yeah. the fact that we won in Portland that year, uh, in that game, makes it completely worse. Like all these fans are yelling at ECS the whole time. You know, it, it's a, it's just part of the rivalry. It's part of what you want to be part of. It's such a good rivalry. After you guys won, they actually kept us in our seats for a good yeah. like 15, 20 minutes until the stadium cleared out of Portland fans. And then once the stadium was empty, then they walked us out to our buses. It was nuts. It's smart. I mean, you don't, you don't want to put anybody's safety in danger. You know, you're part of such a big rivalry and, and it gets heated. So, yeah. um, you know, for, for the safety of the fans, uh, that's always number one. Is not playing this year or kind of like the setback from coronavirus and everything being shut down, is that going to affect next year at all? I mean, it's going to affect this year already. Um, we're going to play less games most likely. Uh, we'll probably have to play games with no fans at some point. Um, and, and then hopefully we can – transition into playing with with people in the stands with people in the stadium um, and then next year it can it can really alter you know the schedule how many games we play um, and then all the safety precautions that that you have to take with with all the fans so uh, this year is really important to to kind of try to make it as normal as possible for next year hey we want you to stay healthy uh, if anybody wants to come at you on Fortnite, what's your gamer tag what's what's your name <laughs> It's get active 10. So shoot, shoot them my way. All right, man. Hey, like I said, thanks for uh, tapping in with us. I know you have a busy day. You were working out and you, you squeeze us in. I do appreciate it, Christian. Thank you. Yeah, guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. No problem. Appreciate you listening. I'm glad you're a fan. That's awesome. It means a lot. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good one. Dude. I'll talk to you later. Right. Bye. Thank you. you bye, All guys. Right, bye. It's the Wake Up Show. With Strawberry and Lizette Love on Cube 93.3.